Hey, what is up, everyone? This is Gary A. Swaby, and you're now listening to or watching the Powercast. And today we're going to be recapping Power Book 2 Ghost, Season 4, Episode 7. And the title of the episode is I Can't Fix This. And I am joined today by Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. How are you doing? <clears throat> Excuse me. How are you doing, Richard? Doing good, Gary. What's up, listeners and viewers? Yep, and I'm also joined by Miss Dana Abercrombie. How are you today, Dana? I'm breathing. It's a heavy breeze. It's with sigh, but I am breathing. Good to know. Good to know. Um, I hope you <laughs> hope you're doing good. Though. Um. Uh, yeah. So we we're a bit late, you know, this week. Uh, clearly. Um, and you know that is just because uh. You know, stars is is uh, being very like um, uh, security like driven basically with their screeners right now. Like you know, they're kind of um, <clears throat> they're tightening up and making sure you know since it's the final season of Ghost, they don't want a lot of stuff to get out there. Uh, although I do see a lot of people still, you know, <laughs> guys do see a lot of reporters out there. Uh, but still, you know, I understand. You know, they want to. Uh, you know, keep it, keep things on the low for the next uh, few episodes. So we, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't get the screeners at the usual time and stuff like that. So, um, and, you know, Dana, Dana still gets her screeners because she's doing the interviews, but, you know, uh, myself and Rich also need to see uh, the episode for us to record early. So, you know, we was able to, to get it at the time we usually do. So for the next few episodes, we're going to be later, but, to be honest, that might not be a bad thing because, like, you know, we'll have more to talk about, like, you know, after the fact, I guess, like, because usually we don't even have the trailer for the next episode and stuff like that. So, you know, we can kind of take our time now and uh, do more, I guess. So it's not too much of a bad thing. Uh, it just means waiting longer for our recap video. But yeah, with that being said, very interesting episode. I've seen a lot of reactions and stuff online <laughs> to this episode um uh yeah so uh, a, a lot of memes as well of a, a certain officer ramirez <laughs> so we'll definitely talk about that uh but yeah uh interesting episode so we're gonna get right to our takeaways um if you are watching this and and you enjoy our conversation please to please do hit that like button and you know share the video subscribe to the channel all that good stuff but uh, this week, it is Dana Abercrombie's turn to go first. So, Dana, I know you have a whole book of notes there. So, when, whenever you're ready, hit us with your takeaways. Okay. So, I initially, as you guys know, I, I like my notes. I write my notes when I, as I watch the show. And it kind of came to a point where as I'm watching the show and I'm watching things progress, where I think I'm mentally tapped out. Now, I love power. I love the universe. I respect the writers. I respect everything. Everyone is entitled to an opinion. And whether it's right or wrong, it's still an opinion. At the end of the day, the writers are still writing. They're making their money. Power Universe is still one of the highest rated programs on stars. I love that. I respect that. I love that for us. The goal of the show is to entertain us and to get us involved into all of these different characters. So with that said, I don't know what happened with this season and I cannot blame writer's strikes. I cannot blame the actor's strike. I cannot blame a cancellation because this show has gotten to the point where a combination of I don't care and this doesn't feel like the show that was at least from last season. I feel like things have gotten so convoluted and storylines have become so far adrift from how it was introduced that everything that they're doing, they're throwing things at us. And for me alone, it's not working. It's not sticking. Diana, Losing her baby, I felt 
was a way of making things convenient. Because now we no longer have to worry about the baby. And you're giving you say you're giving me monologues about how the baby represented hope and change. And I deeply feel that we could still have hope and change and still keep her pregnant, but also understanding the act of revenge and the act that revenge is never going to be satisfying. But with that said, I don't feel that that should have even been Diana's goal from the beginning. And if that was Diana's goal, and we go back from season three, it shouldn't have been random Felicia that I just introduced to and therefore don't care about. That should have been Monet from the very beginning. If you guys remember watching this whole show, which should have been the Tariq show, but became everybody else's show, Monet was suffocating this family. And remember, the whole goal was Diana. Diana, from her very initial thing, will never be free of her if she is alive. Remember, the whole goal of we're going to basically kill Monet, right? Remember the drive-by. Then remember how it got twisted and thwarted by um, Tasha, because she actually did the shooting. And Monet actually lived, but she lived protecting Diana. And it was like, oh, maybe she does care. And maybe this is a, a flip of the switch. And remember when Lorenzo and Zeke both visit her and I guess the, the limbo afterlife art. And we didn't know what was going on. And then we, we discovered Monet is actually still a terrible person. And Diana realized we still have to find a life on our own. What has happened to that? There was a lot of contradictions with this episode alone especially involving Diana. Diana stated, I want out of this family. I want out of this business. I want to be free. This was way before she was pregnant. I felt like this, you know, this was way before a lot of things. Monet is the one who killed Poppy. No, she loved herself some Poppy. Poppy was her light in her world and her everything. And I just really feel that we took a storyline and it's not even we're moving forward with it. We're changing everything. So therefore, there's no connection at all. So we have the whole, you know, look at Poppy. Look what she did. And she's trying to convince the other kids. And Kane is running amok. But, you know, the whole thing with her and Drew. But now it seems like, I thought you cared about this family. You know, and she's trying to justify killing a cop. And you could say, oh, but, you know, the baby and the fetus and, oh, my God, it's, it's murdered and it's killed. I understand that. But if you really, truly want no parts of everything, to me, it felt like that would have been the last straw. I'm packing my bags. I don't care if I have to catch a midnight train to Georgia. I'm done. I'm leaving this family. But all of a sudden, we're killing cops. We're smashing people in the head with pans. We're, we're showing, oh my God, there's so much rage that I have inside, but it's contradicting what we have. I understand if someone attacks you, what's gonna be your first thought? Well, I'm gonna kill him, right? That, that's natural. But then I felt like would a talk through Tariq, maybe a talk with Monet, a talk with Jesus, I'm not gonna do that. You know what? I need to leave, I have to go. But instead you have her involved now even deeper in something that they tried to keep her away from. So I don't know what's going on with this Diana situation. And I am to the point where I genuinely do not care. I want to talk about Detective Carter. Okay, Detective Carter, you know, he killed Kamal. He's running this crooked task force. You could say it's crooked because, you know, and in order for them to truly stop a lot of the criminals, they have to become a criminal right? They have to make deals with criminals, right? Don't kill the innocent. You work for us. Try to lower down that crime. Make it look good at least. People cut deals all the time. I genuinely believe that that happens in real life. Absolutely. You get people on your payroll in the back pocket. Okay, you can argue that people get a little bit greedy and things happen on the side. That's fine, right? But then all of a sudden, we're killing Kamal an innocent cop. We're, we're wrangling in people who have nothing to do with the situation. 
we're becoming egotistical. What happened from when we saw in season one? The big, remember I made this big thing about the, the church and it looked like something out of face off with Nicolas Cage in the coat, just flapping in the wind. And then, you know, he's sitting there mourning the death of his wife. We, we, we don't know what happened. Remember she died. Maybe it's crossfire between two gangs. And I'm determined to get my wife and I'm determined to clean these streets. What happened to Paul? Remember that whole situation when she came in? Oh my goodness, they killed my son. Or was it the nephew? I forgot which one it was. But either way, someone was dead. Oh my goodness, he killed him. You have to, to restore his honor and, and make sure everyone goes to jail. And the whole thing with three and the cell phone. Remember that part? We mentioned it like maybe once. Where's Pond? Where's the whole you? gave me the feeling, and by you, writers you, gave me the feeling that Detective Carter was that last person who knew Ghost, it's that connection to Ghost. I know you, I know Ghost, you're no different than Ghost, right? Remember that? You're no different than Ghost. And the whole thing with Tariq, from episode one, season one, I'm not my father. I can be someone different. Remember Tasha? You can be someone different. We, the passion, I'm sitting in the corner. We even saw that this episode. Sitting in the corner, we waiting for you. Come home, boy. We waiting for you. You don't have to be your father. And him fighting between being his father and being himself. Remember that whole entire LSD uh, uh, monologue? Not monologue, but sequence of events where he has to kill himself in order to become ghost. And you see, basically, he's a shell of a man. And now he's that new person that apex predator you're telling me you're an apex predator where's the apex predator is it in the room with us is it in the same book maybe i have a different book is it me i don't know but it seems to me that everything that you have promised or at least alluded to we're not getting anymore and this has just become a mishmash of characters and situationships that i don't care brady let's talk about brady Brayden, remember, he have been through the ups and downs. That's a ride or die. You would be lucky to have a friend like Brayden. Remember that stand? Remember he stood on that stand? I don't know what you're talking about. I have, I have no idea. He stood up for his friends. Remember in the last season? Or no, it was actually this season. He stood up to his family. That's my boy. That's my family. Remember the father? That jungle bunny. I don't want him in here. How dare that Negro ruin our good white name? This is my, this is your downfall. Poor Trace got beaten half to death. Remember Trace? We don't like Trace. When I saw him and looked at Trace, like, hey, you know what, Trace? You might be right. Remember the sister? She's going through it, the whole dead thing. And I was, I was starting to feel, I was like, ooh, maybe, maybe Brayton and the sister gonna team up. Remember, she almost died. Remember that whole cane situation? And to me, it was like, you know, I chose my family to be with you. And then they had that argument. And I'm not saying that him not doing the drug situation, I understand. Because he doesn't have anyone to talk to. He's alone in this whole situation, Chip. But what have they done with Brady after that? We yell and scream at each other. He does some crack or cocaine. Sorry, classified different. Um, he does cocaine. And... Now it's they're kicked out of course correct because you know, oh we're you I'm not gonna be used to sell your drugs, you're running around like a fiend. He's a fiend at this point. He's feeding for it to the point where the girl that he called a drug addict is like, I'm not dealing with you. You too druggy. God bless. But what happened to that ride or die situation? And I understand, you know, you can have a progression and then this is a character arc and he's dealing with what he has to do with. But we're doing nothing with Brady. Remember, Brayden actually shot somebody? I thought we were tag teaming. Why are you calling this dude Little Tommy and not Little Cracky? I'm just confused about the character group of what's going on with the situation show. Monet. Let's take Monet. Now, Monet got the whole family in this whole situation ship because if she walked away, I don't think we would be here. But she didn't. And it clearly shows 
that she is just a terrible person. And I actually don't have a problem with no man. This is the one part where I'll actually praise you. You can have be a terrible person through and through, from the beginning to the end. And from the beginning, this woman's first introduction, we was like, her terrible mama she is. And at the very end with this episode, what was it? You chose your plug instead of your kid. Remember that whole situation? Okay, cool. I feel that at this point now, because it is written, Monet can do anything that she wants to to them kids, and they'll still be there. Not once have you shown me anything differently. Drew, Drew wants to belong. This dude gets beat up in every episode and told what to do in every episode. Do I genuinely care? Remember he was supposed to be the artist? Remember that scene in the exhibit where he's like, show me your work and maybe we can hang it up on the wall. Remember his dreams and goals and ambitions? I understand that the street life is making you choose this because it's overpowering what you want to do, but I genuinely feel like we've just not even explored that anymore. You've not even given me a monologue saying, you know, I choose this over my own happiness. It's just, it is what it is. No one seems to have any, any say with anything. Ah, remember the whole thing? I, I want my sister and my mother to be free of you. And Michael Lilly, nah. Again, Michael Lilly, protect the innocent. But now everybody's dragged into this. Oh, IAB is on our behind. Weird. Have we seen one scene with IAB? One scene at all. One notion of a monologue. You know, that Detective Carter, he sure doesn't smell, right? Have we seen that? No. Not a single drop. And so I just kind of feel like we're just saying things to say things so we can just justify whatever we want to in the script. And I have gotten to the point where I know that we have these three episodes and to respectfully, because everyone has ups and downs. And for a show to last four seasons and for you to get to your last season, that's a miracle. That's great. Because season two could have sucked. We've seen that before. Season two was trash. Or season three could have been trash. And the fact that we got to season four, that's amazing. But what in God's name is happening in that writing room? Respectfully, of course. Because I don't understand where we're going. I don't understand where we're at. So what is your end game? Remember, and before this, what's her name? Noma. Noma was married to Mecca. Give me that run. That's my engagement run. And we was like, oh, she really loved her. And even if we decided, okay, she's just using Mecca because she needs that American citizenship. I see 90 Day Fiance. Sometimes it takes a little while for you to get that American citizenship. <clears throat> and everybody else is dead. Cool. And she's just running around, can't find beer, can't do nothing. But it seems like from that powerful woman who's like, um, I'm international. You know, she, she came across as like some big international crime lord. Well, you know, everyone knew her name. She said, oh, oh, oh. Remember Obi? I was going to do what, what she says. I loved Obi. She killed Obi. Okay, cool. But ever since then, she seemed like she lost her power. She's just running around sleeping with random people, which again, do you, babe? Feminism. But I don't feel any kind of strength within her. She doesn't scare me. I don't feel anyone's threatened. Like, cool, okay, you have Effie, or Effie, we'll get to Effie in a minute, but you have Effie, and, and then what? You're threatening a bunch of teenagers. If we really boil this down, these are a bunch of teenagers, maybe 20 at the most? 21 if we really wanna stretch it? No, 20, because everyone's in college. Except for Kane, Kane seems to be a little bit older. But everyone's in college, so I'm gonna assume we're still, either 20 or below so you're 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 showing your badness by basically being outsmarted and then yelling at a bunch of teenagers that to me is not threatening at all that just seems like you're too little to play with the people who are your own age where are the men where are the women where are these big bosses i'm confused you're running around sleeping with Kane and Davis so you can figure out your citizenship and you're lost and you're confused. And method is supposed to be your golden ticket. You're supposed to be so smart. Are you telling me you don't have a backup plan for your backup plan? These people with basic businesses. No, hey, 
at McDonald's, I'm going to work for two years, but I'm going to take that money that I made at McDonald's and I'm going to apply to, I don't know, Bob, Billy Bob School of Schooling and I'm going to get my education. And, and as I'm doing Billy Bob School of Schooling and working with McDonald's, I'm going to meet Mr. Tiger Man and Mr. Tiger Man is going to introduce me to Mr. Kane because I'm going to have all my paperwork already and I'm going to get a job at Goldman Sachs. We have plans and steps. Children have plans and steps of what they want to do and what they want to be. And I feel like you're supposed to be so intelligent. You required all these different money, all these different funds. Remember, you need you need a, a legit business or somebody to marry so you can wash all this money you've been laundering. You don't have a backup plan to your plan. You don't have anyone who can have a citizenship. Remember the brother? She has a brother in Nigeria. Are we in Nigeria? Do we know anything about Nigeria? Do we care about Nigeria? I'm confused. Are we just throwing out words? Because I just don't understand. Where well, we're at the point where a teenager, maybe might be 20, 21, is proposing marriage to fix your problem. Or we have David. Blessings to David, but he can throw away. Yes, he's a lawyer. He has no power. Um, let's kind of talk about David for one second. I'll be over soon. I promise. David went from the scheming, plotting lawyer. Remember him and Sat? I love me some Sat. He killed off Sat. To, you know, the whole situation with the brother. So that they, they would never know the crimes that he had. So we killed off Red Man and then the other man who both, both played the brother. Whole character. We had the consequences to that. Remember there was a drive? Remember there was a USB or something? You plug it in a little computer and it's like, oh, all this information and evidence that facts out on everyone. Where are we with that? I'm confused. Because we're at episode seven now. So we just mentioned things and then just not bring it again. So I'm, what's going on with that? Davis is running around being a hoe. Again, respectfully, nothing wrong with being a hoe. But what's your purpose in life? You're supposed to be working towards getting your license back. Yeah. Remember him and Tariq was supposed to team up? And in a way, when I interviewed uh, Method Man, they had like this brother relationship. Little bro, where's that? I'm confused. I don't understand what's going on. Maybe it's me. I could be wrong. So I just don't know what we're doing with these characters anymore. And I could be missing some more people. Kane, you can do you. The only person who's just like, I'm going to just do me and climb up the echelons seems to be Kane. At this point, poor Effie. Remember, I'm going to robot school. Remember that whole there was a whole line because you know I did take note. There was a whole line in here where she said, "Remember, he was kind of a little jelly because her goal is to go to Hollywood, and she was like, oh, it's it's actually South California because she going to her little robot school.'" And he was like, "I done forgot the line," but basically, it came across as if like he wasn't jealous. But you can tell, like, mm, it hurt him a little bit. Your whole plan is to get out of here. Mm, I miss you. Mm. So, excuse me. And she's in instead choosing Monet because Effie has a way to get out. And I love the fact that he's trying to help Effie get out. But again, Monet, you're holding teenagers hostage. You're not holding men. You're holding teenagers. You're, you're, you're a suffocating mom. You're basically Monet. Effie, not Effie. Noma and Monet are the same at this point. You're suffocating a bunch of kids to work for you because you can't, what, find men? Find people who are actually more qualified to do this? It's pretty sad, if you ask me. I'm not going to take you seriously because all your henchmen are children, and they're not even your kids. And then let's speak about kids for one second. I promise I'll be done, but I've been holding on to this for a whole season respectfully. The daughter, remember? Remember the daughter? whose name I can't remember right now because I'm thoroughly aggravated at this point. I'm like, what's the point of remembering names? It's the plot of my plot. Yeah. Anya Covington. What? Anya, Anya Covington. Covington. I'm, oh, doesn't you just love that name, Anya Covington? Don't it sound like she's all London-y and, and British-y and proper? Okay, what's happened with her? Because remember, she was supposed to be used as leverage against Noma and that whole situation. We're going to kidnap her. And we went through the whole thing with the painting and there was a picture. And like, you know, the dad's dead. Was she just there to sleep with Tariq and then make Noma mad? Because we've done nothing with her. 
at all. I'm confused. Because we was like, oh, it's Effie's actual daughter. And we had all these little things and plots that was going on. We were basically mephisto in this whole show when it came to Anya. But nothing has happened. And <clears throat> at this point, I'm, I'm very confused. And so <clears throat> what, 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 I just want to go quickly about the show we should have had. I'll be done in five seconds. I swear to black Jesus, I had coffee. So just give me a second. Okay, <clears throat> Lorenzo was dead, remember? They killed Lorenzo, okay, and it was supposed to have a lasting effect on the, on the whole community, the underground drug community. We never got that, okay? Uh, Tasha shot Monet. Remember that was supposed to be a war between the two families? Yeah, we never got that. Okay, Tariq, remember? He fought to escape his dad's shadow. Where? Is dad hiding? Did he win? I'm confused, because we got nothing of that at all. You know, except for a conversation today with Tasha. Come back to me, son. Okay, um, the theme of loyalty. Remember Tariq was driven by his family, and that was supposed to be a jock, a jock, uh, can't forget, I'm forgetting words, but it's supposed to be like an opposite of my mother Diana was running from her family. There was no sense of loyalty. So we saw those two and they, how they were supposed to come ahead. Yeah, we didn't even have that. Even with the baby, baby was like, hey, I'm pregnant. And then like two episodes later, I'm not anymore. Uh, yeah. Um, then we have um, squashed beef with Tommy. Remember Tommy? Remember Tom Tom? What was the point of that? We squashed our beef, so maybe he'll come back. You know, all that whole old grievances were over. Everyone's moving on with their lives. So I've never really had that. If you take away that scene, take it completely away. Does it affect the show? No, no effect on the show whatsoever. Just a, hey, Uncle Tommy, I can't help you. I'm out. Okay, why did you bring him back? I'm confused. Because that could have just easily been an email. Hey, Tasha. You know, sorry about everything. I got a kid now. I have a whole family. No, not him a kid. He has a nephew. He has a nephew. He's out in Chicago. That could have been a postcard. But no, no, we did that. Um, then we had, remember Braden was actually doing criminal activities and he was getting his little, his little wings. He was learning how to be a criminal and shot people. Yeah. Remember the agent? Yeah. No, we didn't do that again. Uh, uh, remember? So I also bring that up, Tommy, he picked Tariq as his family instead of his actual family. We don't see the family again, nothing else that, okay. Ah, remember Denise? Can we talk about Denise for a second? Remember Denise is Detective Carter's wife? And he said this, he was filled with anger, bitterness and wrath. Ah, ah, he acted in anger. Remember he was with the priest and he was like, so have you, how have you, you know, responded to this, these emotions, that I've acted in anger. Where's that anger? Because the only time that we had reference of the wife was remember he was talking to himself in the, in the house and he was like, to the picture, where is that? I don't, I don't see that. I don't feel that anymore. And he's just a crooked cop. And then you can make the argument, but hey, you're crooked and it's a cycle. You know, you should become crooked, now you are crooked. Now you're the criminal that you always wanted to be arrested. I don't care, because you're not making me care. It's just words, and it's not even a feeling, it's just words, okay. Uh, then, I bought that before. What happened to the phone with the nephew? No mention of the nephew, where's Pond? Is she on vacation? Because like, if I was Pond, I would be checking in, hey, Detective Carter, at least once a month, or a week. Phone call, hey, is there any update? What happened? He was an agent. How come there aren't other, other agents? And again, that goes back to the I, IAB, or whatever you want to call it. Bunch of letters. Where are they? I don't know. So I'm done. I'm sorry for that rant. But I just felt that at this point, I don't know where the show is going. I don't care. But blessings, respectfully. Again, if you was like, hey, Power of Origins is on right now, I'm going to watch that. Even if you was to say, we've actually been renewed for Power Season 5, I would watch that, but I just don't know what we're going with this season. And so I rest my case. God bless. Wow, <laughs> Dana, she really unloaded on us uh, with that with those takeaways. Um, but no, I, I feel your frustrations, and I, I, I do think a lot of people echo your uh, sentiments. And um, you made me 
you made me realize something as you were talking, like, because, you know, all the stuff you were bringing up about the characters and how much they've, their paths have kind of changed and, you know, how, how much, you know, we're not really seeing them fleshed out. Like, I just think this show has too many characters right now. And I think we should have had some deaths by now, maybe to kind of, you know, boost up or prop up certain plot points. I think they've been playing it way too safe with the writing and they're writing themselves into a corner a little bit because of that. Um, yeah, like it's just because they, they have so much good talent, so many good characters. It's just they're underutilized because there's not enough time to really focus on any any of them. Um, you know, it's just it happens just very quickly. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> I don't want to, you know, well, I don't want to say too much right now because I still have my takeaways and Rich has to go next. But, but yeah, like I just, I just think, you know, this, this season is, is starting to seem a bit like a misstep just because like we only have three episodes left and it's like at this point, what could really happen? I mean, you, you mentioned Tommy, Dana. I re I'm starting to think the ending is just Tommy returns and claps everyone up basically, like just shoots everyone and, <laughs> takes over the show like uh, like so so the spin-off is about him basically uh but i don't know I, I i don't know where they're going at this point so yeah but excellent uh thoughts thanks for you know sharing your your thanks for being so honest and passionate and everything um about you know your thoughts on the show um and yeah you, you did say a lot of real stuff there but uh We'll, we'll we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. We'll talk more in the the questions and discussion segment. But uh, Richard, you are up next. So when you're ready, hit us with your takeaways. Okay, first and foremost, uh, outstanding takeaways by Dana. I had to laugh at a lot of stuff that was said because I agree. So that's why I had to be muted because I didn't want to throw off what she was saying. But I agree. Everything she said, outstanding. So let me start by saying this. Uh, the name of this episode is I Can't Fix This. And that is the perfect name of this episode of the season because, yes, they have definitely lost their way with the storytelling, certain stuff. I understand. But I, here's my perspective is I only look at this show as a form of entertainment I because logically some stuff doesn't make sense, but, you know, on a week to week basis. But we can all agree. They have definitely lost a step. And before I get into my takeaways, shout out to Sasha Penn and Razor Kanan, because that is the only power show that I feel hasn't lost a step. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next season. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, let me get into the takeaways here. So first and foremost, I want to talk about Tariq and Diana in this episode. Obviously, they lost the baby. And I know when we had our discussion last week, I made a prediction and said, yeah, they probably were going to lose the baby because I felt that was going to advance the storyline uh, and make Tariq obviously want revenge and Diana as well. Now, I thought it was interesting that Tariq, you know, obviously we understand why he was angry. He goes to lengths to contact Davis and says, give me the contact information of these cops because I want to I want to be the one to take them out. And of course. While all this is going on, as Dana had already mentioned, Tariq and Braden lose their business because of what happened with Braden in the last episode where he got up on stage and uh, he obviously was high. So uh, Dana had posed a question, and this is something that she said before we started recording. Why the hell are they in school, right? So this is the answer, right? Because they wanted to start another business. Uh, it's, it's all a matter of convenience. They wanted to start another business. And then later in this episode, you had, uh, you know, Braden is obviously still there where Effie is there and Kane is there and Kane needed to work with both Effie and, and uh, Braden. So that that is the answer to the question. It's all a matter of convenience, I think, because they're obviously not in school. They're not taking classes. They ain't got time to take no damn classes, apparently, because they're they in the drug game. This is a very serious uh, situation, I guess. But, yeah, I think that's what it is. But to get back to Tariq and, and, and Diana in this episode. Obviously, Diana does kill Felicia, all right? And I'm going to just say this. I saw that image of her with that frying pan. I instantly thought to myself, you know, uh, maybe she could have, I, I mean, I was expecting her to maybe use some some hot grits 
Like, you know, the, the type of treatment that Al Green got. Maybe that would have been because I didn't know where they were going with the with the frying pan. It's like, all right, all right, guys. I thought that was pretty hilarious. But yeah, she kills Felicia. And then she finds out that Felicia has a kid. And I and I assumed, yes, that obviously she also has a kid because a lot of these cops have secrets. The people on 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 Carter's Carter's crew, they all have secrets. They all have lives outside of what they're doing. So it made sense that she would have the kid. And then, of course, you have this thing where Tariq does go see Tasha. One interesting thing about that, obviously, he goes to Tasha for advice because he is thinking about going after the killer. But one very interesting thing is it is brought up that Tasha says, oh, yeah, well, Monet never found out that I was the one that shot her. When this season started, did Monet not tell her kids, find out who tried to have me killed? Okay. She obviously found out later in the in the season that you know was a setup with the two with, with both of her kids, but ultimately the th the situation is is that I I kind of feel like they brought that line up about Tasha making well Monet doesn't know about what that I was the one to try to take her out I I'm, I'm curious if they're going somewhere with that because no real need for her to say that unless they're going to revisit it later but we'll see what happens but pretty much after Tariq has this conversation he does go back. He finds out that Diana did what she did, and then he is there to basically comfort her and say, you know, I I felt the same about revenge when I killed Ray Ray because he took out my sister. So I kind of feel like that is the bond that they have between these two characters now. But I also feel like from a storytelling standpoint, you we recall that Tariq, his goal this season was to take everybody out, Okay. And I remember when he had Diana at gunpoint, he was going to shoot her. And then e even when he heard that she was pregnant and then he found out, oh, it is it's my baby. Then he was like, OK, so now that Diana is no longer pregnant, you clearly still have issues with the Tejadas. Tariq needs to go to take them out. Obviously, they're not going to do that yet because apparently they have to team up once again to deal with Noma and Carter. But Tariq, I just, I don't, like I said, like you said, Dana, everyone has had a different story from the start of the season to the very end. And it's very confusing to know which path they're taking the writing and the storytelling. So I have an issue with that, but we'll see what happens. But that is the extent of my takeaway with Tariq and Diana. Let me go to uh, the Tejadas next, because uh, I have a few things to say about this. Obviously, so first and foremost, I'm going to, to, to rename Drew. I'm going to refer to Drew as the choke master because every time this guy has done a kill in this show, it's basically him choking people out with the exception of, you know, his, his boyfriend, you know, he, he didn't do that to him, you know, but that I, 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 when I saw that scene of him choking out Roman, I laughed because I look at Roman. This is a guy that is a little bit bigger than uh, Drew, a lot more muscular so it doesn't make any kind of sense. Like he can't try and do something to try to get free. That that's kind of ridiculous. All right. I laughed when I saw that. Obviously, we know they told us that Drew is a killer. And so we knew that Drew was going to kill him. I just was expecting him to be a little bit more creative. He could have maybe took a shank and maybe stabbed him to death because he came from behind the guy. So it's kind of like that choking is like, come on, man. This guy is a little bit bigger than him. I'm pretty sure he can try to get out of that choke move, but it is what it is. So he does uh, that. He was uh he was he was too into the magazine he was reading. That's why. So <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. He was distracted. Uh very funny. But uh, you know, I, I find it interesting, and obviously, you know, he does. We know that prior to this kill, the last episode, he was speaking to Nico and he made the comment to Nico about, yeah, so once I do this for you, Diana and Monet, you leave my mom and my and my and my sister alone. And that was what he told him. Now, obviously, uh, he when he gets out, he tells Carter about the deal that he had. And Carter says, absolutely not. You know, what What, what do you think? You're not running the show here. I'm still the one that's in charge. And I'm going to get to Carter a little bit later. But I thought that was pretty hilarious that uh, you did all that. And then, of course, because of the situation that happens with Felicia and Diana, uh, Drew snitches and tells Carter everything. He tells him that, that Noma is what was the connect they were working with and where everybody is at. So obviously when they arrive there and they see Drew and then they see uh, Carter, they're like, oh, they're surprised. I, I can't believe that. So I thought that was interesting. It's pretty, pretty funny. 
But as for the rest of the rest of the Tejadas in this episode, let, let me just say this. Woody McClain is an outstanding actor. He is a, a very funny dude, highly entertaining in this episode as Detective Ramirez. Uh, I really hope that this guy has a future beyond this show, if he is still a part of this show, because really he is the only interesting character on the show right now, in my opinion, that actually is entertaining. So I don't necessarily want him to get killed off, but we'll see what happens. But I will say this, because I don't know if you guys picked up on this. I'm assuming that the viewers might have missed this as well. The scene where Kane, Effie, and Braden had this whole plan. Let's go to the let's go to this cop's place to try to get the laptop to access the information. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is a photo, a family photo that they show right before they, they come to the door, where, where Effie and Braden come to the door. Nico is in that photo. So I want to see where they're going with that because that is the, that is Carter's guy, Nico. He was in the photo. That's his family, his wife and his kid. So uh, I do want to see where they're going with that because you saw in this episode that Nico, he thought it was kind of weird. He didn't really believe that the Russians killed uh, Kamal. So I and then and then and then we'll get into it later because in the trailer he's also in the trailer meeting up with Kane and Noma. We'll get into that later. But I but that tells me yes. That situation, I want to see where they're going with that. Obviously, Nico is probably going to be someone that will, I guess, help take down Carter to some extent. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's a very interesting tip because it happened very closely. I had to stop the screen and I look back and say, yeah, that's the same character, Nico. So let's see what happens with that. Okay, that, that could be interesting. So my final takeaway of this episode, and this is where I derive my name for today, Detective Carter's Therapist. Because this guy needs a therapist after this episode. This character has a completely different motive, like Dana said earlier. But the start of the season, his goal was to take down Tariq St. Patrick, all right? And then later in this episode, when he finds out that Felicia has that video evidence of Tariq killing Zion, I would think, hey, this shows that he killed somebody. That's it. That should be it for Tariq. But no, he's not focused on that because he got his own issues to worry about. So let me get into this. When he met up with Tate and he's basically trying to tell him, oh, yeah, we're looking for the killer. And then even when he when they actually do kill this guy, and I'll get into that in a minute. I find it very interesting how Tate doesn't question whether or not. I mean, obviously, he says, is this the guy? Yeah, whatever. And, he, and all this other stuff. But I find it interesting how Tate, they don't, he doesn't think about it too too further because again tate used to be a police officer as well he should be suspicious of any and everybody and want to get a definitive answer as to what happened to his brother yes he is there he says he was my better half you know and then we had some excellent acting by uh our boy lorenz tate with the crying that was that was great always always great at when he does this stuff showing emotion but i just thought that it's a little silly for him not to question carter because Prior to this episode, we didn't even know these two characters had any type of relationship to know each other that well enough. So it's kind of like it came out of nowhere. You say, oh, yeah, he's they're connected now. He's involved in this. So he should be if I was him, I would want some more answers. But obviously, you know, he's off filming another movie right now. So maybe he they don't have time to utilize him that much in the season. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But what I find interesting is, like I said earlier, when Carter tells Felicia, Carter, after he does this to Kamal in the previous episode, he never tells Felicia or Nico the truth. He has them also believing the Russians were involved in this. And that's why I say Nico was smart because he is suspicious of Carter. Obviously, he's not going to question him yet. We'll have to see where that goes. But later in this episode, when they do go after, when they get that tip on the Russians and they do go after the Russians, they do manage to kill one of the guys. One of the shooters escapes. Now, I'm pretty sure that shooter is going to get back to the boss and they are going to retaliate against Carter, you know, as a result of this. I'm pretty sure that's coming now because you don't let, and again, this goes to the sloppiness of Carter. You don't let somebody get away. You killed one of the guys. They saw you. They know who you are. So I kind of feel like that that's going to come back and get him later. So we'll see where they're going with that. But yeah, even when he killed that guy, then he made it look like the guy shot shot at him first nico questioned him in that moment and said oh are you sure this is the guy so i do want to see where they're going with that character in terms of him finding out more lies about his boss we'll have to see what happens um and then of course 
at the end by the end of the episode where Carter comes there, they have this whole thing where they where they finally they reveal to him that Noma is behind this. And now he's talking about, well, I need to get you leverage from you guys to take down Noma. Here is the issue. And this is where I'm going to end it. Like Dana said, when they introduced Noma as a character, this was a character that was very ruthless. Someone of power that obviously could take out anybody that gets in her way. Now this character is just around trying to get the citizenship. Maybe she should have reached out to Gary because he is available, passport husband, maybe. But I, I don't know if that would have worked anyway. But I'm just saying, I don't like what they did with this character because this is a character that you built up in the, when you introduced them and then it just completely devolved after that. Like Dana said, Obi was there. He was the one that was helping on a lot of different things. I understand you want to take him out because he lied, so on and so forth, but you still need to show that Noma is a threat. Them outright saying that he needs help to take down Noma made me laugh because I look at Noma, I don't think she's a threat because she is preoccupied now, worried about Davis and Kane. And Kane's game to basically try and marry her to become a citizen, also laughable. But again, they they wanted to they wanted to lean into this, I guess, because they wanted to show the character has a sensual side, whatever, whatever. We're not talking about it's it, it's totally fine that I was thinking this was going to happen because they, from the very beginning of the season they were teasing the the relationship stuff that they could do with her and other characters. But I'm just saying, as a fan of the show, uh, I just I think it's a complete joke that you how you have made this character what she is right now, and I also think it's a joke that you're telling us that Carter is so bad of a villain he completely overshoots the Tejadas, which I think is BS. Because the Tejadas are the people that Tariq should be taken out. They built up Monet the entire show as this is a, the queen pin, the one you have to worry about. And now you're teaming them all up to take out Carter, who only came this season. It makes no sense whatsoever. So that's all I wanted to say. We have three episodes left. Thank God for that. Uh, but, uh, hey, I look forward to, to talking about it with you guys and, of course, the listeners, because this show and talking with everybody else, this is what makes me enjoy doing these discussions. But but stars as a whole with this show, they have got to do better. And I'm not really convinced they're going to do better in the next three episodes. So that's all, what, all I wanted to say. OK, yeah. Excellent uh, takeaways, uh, as usual. And um, yeah, that that Nico connection that blew my mind a little bit because I, I didn't notice that when I when I watched it. So that that's a very good observation right there. Um, you know that all that's connected. Um, and I do have something to say about him uh, in my takeaways. But yeah, that was that's well spotted. Like, and I wonder if they're actually going to do something with that now. Um, you know, now that that connection is there. Um, and, and I guess that's one thing to give them credit for, because sometimes they do put these little details in the scenes, but it's it's just about like paying them off sometimes, because I, I don't think they do a, a good job of paying off some of these things that they set up. But um, but yeah, great, great thoughts. Uh, you know, you've all been brutally honest about the show. And yeah, um, now nah, I guess it's my turn. Uh, Dana, did you have something real quickly that you were going to add? Oh, I didn't know that you, I thought you went already. I'll go after you. Okay, yeah, it's my turn now. So, um, yeah, so let me get right to it. So my first takeaway uh, is Effie and Brayden. Um, so like, you know, I feel like these two characters initially in, in Power Ghost, they were like real big characters. They were really part of like the main cast of the show. But I feel like in this season they've taken, uh, you know, the, a background role more, more so. Uh, definitely Effie, you know, she feels more, she she feels like more of a background character now more than ever. And Brayden, he's definitely like kind of, uh, you know, just been sidelined a whole lot this season, um, just because there's so many other characters and, and stuff like that, and there isn't really much for him to do, I guess. Um, but this episode, it did kind of give them some things to do. Of course, we had, you know, the entertaining scene where uh, they tried to get the laptop from the house and they faked the carjacking. And, you know, that that was something for them to do, I guess. Um, and, yeah, like, I feel like this kind of made Brayden a little bit more valuable to Tariq again because, you know, obviously the... Uh, 
what was that dude's name? I forgot his name already. Um, but yeah, that, that was that dude who came in fighting, you know, uh, into that room. And like he was saying, oh, he, he was mad about Braden's behavior at the party. And he kind of fired them as like his booking agent or whatever. Um, Stokely. Stokely, there you go. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so so after that, you know, uh, he's kind of made himself useful again because in that conversation with Effie and Kane, you know, um, Effie basically agreed to give him back the course cor correct app, basically. So if he if he's able to successfully get that back, then you know him and Tarika kind of you know set set up again on course correct, and they could make money again for themselves. So I guess that makes gives him some value. Um, I still think that with only three episodes left, I think. I think he should die to be honest with you <laughs> just, not, not to sound too grim but like i just i'm just i'm just failing to see where these characters are heading to at this point it's like what what could they realistically do to to resolve this character like for think for things to feel fulfilled with this character i mean right now he's going through this drug addiction um you know the whole even l's kind of like backing up on him it seems like because of how he embarrassed himself it's like, I, I don't know, like, I feel like the only way for him to be relevant again is for Tariq to lose him. Um, you know, well, for Tariq to first realize how useful he is and then lose him, basically. Um, so I'm, I'm just struggling to see, you know, what they're planning to do with Brayden. Um, obviously, he is a very, you know, cool character, very likable and everything. It's just this season hasn't done well, you know, with the character, um, in my opinion. And Effie, Effie's, she's had a very background role, but, you know, of course, this season, she's been kind of getting closer to Kane. And to be honest with you, I feel like, because Effie has always been a very mysterious character, like they've kept elements of her secret, you know, especially like her background and stuff. So to be honest with you, I feel like there could be some kind of twist coming with Effie. Um, like uh, what maybe she's connected to Nomar, maybe she's the auntie's daughter or something. Like I, I just go ahead, Rich. I just want to make a comment since you mentioned it. She did get a phone call from her mom and she hung up the phone. So I want to see where they're going with that. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead, Dana. Dana. I was actually doing the I agree with you number, Dan. But... <laughs> okay. What if what and granted, this is I took this off of wrestling, so this kind of popped in my head. Remember the character Raven Richard in WCW? Raven was the was the was the, like the punk rock didn't wash his behind. I'm poor. Oh, look yeah. at me, nevermore. That character. But the backstory of the Raven character was that he was actually very rich and he came from a rich family. What if that's Effie? What if she actually did come from a life of privilege and whatever twistedness happened in that home, she had to leave? I feel that the, uh, Effie alluded to a lot of abuse in her past, which again, storylines we never finished up on, but, and again, she can either come, we could say poor or whatever, but there is something to that backstory of that character that she is purposely hiding. Now, granted, me saying that she actually everybody was rich could, could just be something, me being stupid. But I do feel that wouldn't it be more interesting if it wasn't this life of poverty, but it was a life of privilege that she purposely walked away from and decided to, to make it out on her own? Remember the number? She was supposed to have a number. We don't even know when she got to that number. But the goal was to have that number, and therefore she would be free. So, you know, that phone call really did trigger a lot of things. But technically, this was just the happy dance of the agreement. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There, there's, there's a lot of good theories about where that could go uh, if, there, if there is a twist. Um, and, yeah, like you said, they're purposely kind of uh, keeping that. You know secret you know um i 
oh, is that a happy dance, Dana, or do you want to say something? <laughs> I just wanted to say really thanks. Something that didn't make any sense that probably makes any some sense now. I interviewed Golden Brooks, who plays Janet. Why? I don't know. But I feel that she's going to have a larger part in the upcoming episodes. And then you guys were talking about the phone call that said, Mom, what if? No, they never met Effie, did she? Yeah, they've met. Okay, then never mind. Yeah. Forget me. I'm gone. I quit. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, end of season three, right? They when they was all at the warehouse and stuff. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. There's something with Effie. Like, I, there's some kind of twist. I think they're saying uh, with her. Um, either she's a mole for Carter, or related to Carter, or related to Norma. Like, it's. I think it could be one of those things, but. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm really waiting to see uh, because I, I know the the actress. Um, I can't recall her name. Do you know her name, Dana? The actress for Effie. Um, no, I oh, part I have to Google it because then I forgot. Yeah. We yeah, have new interviews, not. by the way. Oh yeah, we have interviews coming. So, you know, make sure. Yeah, you it's uh, Alex Lapri. Alexi, is it, is it Alex with an I? Is it A L L A L I A L E S I? Yeah, oh, no, Alexi, just, the first. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no? A L I. I'm dyslexic. Yeah, so yeah, so Alex, Alex. Yeah, so I know she she said something about like she wasn't happy with how, the outcome of her character. I think in this season, so something's definitely going to happen with with effie so yeah we we all pay attention to that one i think and then she gives a lot of those like looks like you know like those it's like there's more going on in her mind than meets the eye kind of thing so yeah there, there's something going on there for sure um so yeah a second takeaway detective carter now you both said a lot about Carter already and I have to agree with you, you both. Um, to me, we we saw a very different Detective Carter in this episode. Um, you know, he he often seemed out of character. Uh, and you know, to be fair to them, I guess you know, after killing Kamal and then having pressure from Tate, it would kind of put you know, it would kind of put his back against the wall a little bit because he he didn't plan on killing Kamal but he had to kind of thing, or he felt like he had to. Um, so it would put his back against the wall, but still, I just feel like the character has strayed very far from the, the Carter we met in the first episode. And just the Carter in the first like four episodes just seemed completely different to what we have now uh, to me personally. Um, and yeah, like, before I get to you know what happened at the end, um, so you know the 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 when Felicia showed him the footage, she mentioned that you know she deleted it from the server and all that stuff because because initially I was thinking oh Effie's probably gonna find that video, but she said she deleted it from the server and everything, um, but Carter still has it on the phone. You know he took the phone, so he still has that footage of Tariq killing um, uh, Zion. So I think, you know, that's a card that he's probably going to play later. He's probably going to use that to some degree, um, which which shows he's still kind of calculating, I guess. He's still kind of got something up his sleeve. But um, but also there was, you know, the, the cleanup job that he did to try and clean up Kamal's murder um, by framing, you know, the, the uh, was it the Russian guy, I think? Um, so with that, first of all, like that was an interesting callback to what Tariq did with Junior, you know, like shooting the gun and then, you know, placing it in his hand. Um, so, you know, he basically did the same thing Tariq did in episode one, which was interesting uh, because they, you know, these two characters are supposed to be uh, on opposing sides. Um, and, you know, like Richard mentioned as well, his partner, uh, Detective Holston, um, is it Nico Holston? Is that his full name? Um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So he he clearly wasn't buying any of what happened 
like you, you could see you know throughout the whole scene he's like second guessing carter like just giving him these looks like yeah yeah sure buddy you know like he, he doesn't believe anything <laughs> carter's saying so i do think that's going to come back to haunt uh carter i think you know halston is probably going to uh betray him you know um and we, we've pretty much seen carter's whole squad get dismantled in a couple episodes <laughs> you know basically like you know felicia's gone like Holston's gonna uh, turn on him, so it's like, yeah, who, who does he have now? You know, it's like uh, he's he's back. He's re he's really weak now already. Um, but yeah, like, uh, what else? What did I want to say? Uh, yeah, it's like Carter. I just yeah, I just feel like he's the. See, Michael Ely is a great actor, so he's he's able to take what he's given and he he makes it entertaining he works with it like you can see he's really talented because he's taking what he's given he's he's doing great work with it still you know to the point you know i still want to watch the character but i just you know just the storyline is it's just uh it's just a bit all over the place at the moment and i just i'm i'm struggling to to connect with the character fully and understand his motivations and you know all this stuff i know like he wants he wants leverage on nomar he wants to you know interfere meddle with her like i don't even know why at this point why like why does he want why is he so fixated on no more like what's actually the reason I, I don't know um maybe that's something else they're gonna re reveal uh maybe there's some connection to his wife and how she died i don't know but yeah it's just like Dana, you know, like Dana was saying, like, you know, what happened to the Carter, you know, um, confessing to the priest and then him promising Paz that he's going to, you know, find the killer and bring them to justice and all this stuff. Like, what happened to that? Like, I thought that was going to be the main mission. Um, and then, you know, they, they hit us with the corrupt Carter plot twist. And that was fine. You know, that was compelling. But it's it just... I don't know it's not paying off like like we wanted it to in my opinion um so it's making me it's making me question where we're going in these next three episodes because uh the way that ending was it just it felt very out, out of character like to me personally him coming into that house seeing that they killed felicia you know who is a cop a fellow cop and part of his squad I just don't feel like he would he would let them all go like that. Like I, I feel like I feel like he would kill someone and try to frame, you know, like just he would manipulate the situation. Like he would kill one of them and try to make it look like a double murder or something. Like I just letting them all go because he wants leverage on Nomar. I don't know. It just it just feels a bit off to me. Go ahead, Rich. And, and I don't want to interrupt you, but let me just say I agree a thousand percent because he had them at gunpoint. He had Monet's gun also. Put your gun down, and then he takes her gun. So he definitely could have shot somebody. But yeah, continue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I was thinking he was gonna kill no more. Like, I, I thought he was gonna kill someone. Like when he came in, and and you know, just make this look like a you know, double murder, home invasion, or something. Like, just to to let them all go because he wants leverage on Nova. Like, I, I, just, I don't know. It just seems seems really forced to me uh personally um so yeah i i just want to see where they where they go next with that um so Tariq and tasha is my third takeaway um it was good to see tasha again i have to say like i do like you know seeing some of these legacy characters come back uh you know it's cool to see uh uh i'm i'm bad with names today what's his sister called again yes 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 okay yeah like what wasn't she a baby like i remember she was like she was like this big or something and now she's like a big woman almost um but yeah uh, children grow <laughs> it's magical <laughs> yeah they, it's, they they grow so fast these days um but yeah like it was cool to to, to see them and you know have to read back bonding with them and stuff and tasha was trying to give him that parental guidance and she gave him good advice you know um you need to stop 
getting mixed up with the Tahada's problems and all that stuff. Um, and ironically, Tariq goes right back to, you know, <laughs> getting mixed up in their problems by the end of the episode. Um, so that's funny. But uh, I, I, all of these things happen for a reason, I think, you know, sp especially the line where she says, you know, that bitch doesn't know, do doesn't know I shot her or whatever, like, it, these things happen for a reason. So I think <laughs> they're, they're gonna, you know, something's gonna happen there. I think they're gonna find out um, that, you know, that Tasha was the one that shot at Monet. Um, but yeah, like, I, I just feel like with Tariq, like, uh, I mean, all of these, these moments he has with his mother are great. But he, it, I just feel like he never learns from it. He never takes their advice. He never learns from it. He does the same thing repeatedly over and over again, gets himself into the same problems, same, you know. So it's like, are we going to see some self-reflection from Tariq after this? Like, is he going to understand what his parents have been trying to tell him? Or is it just going to be the same cycle, you know? that uh, Like, these scenes, when we see them, are great. But I just want to see payoff sometimes. Like, I like, what does this mean? Show me what this means. You know, why are we having this scene? Like, give it some more relevance um, than just you know a, a cameo and you know a callback and stuff. Like, because it, it's just right back to the same formula after you know. Um, so that's my thing on it. But it is good to see her, um, and you know, credit to Tariq as well. It's like. He he was actually about to have a baby with Diana, so like we can't a hundred percent blame him for being so tied up with the Tahadas right now because he's he's actually trying to support support Diana because she lost the baby. So I understand that part. You know he, that that's the reason he is kind of invested at the moment, but he still doesn't owe this family anything. You know he maybe Diana. That's a separate case, but he doesn't owe the rest of them anything because they've been through so much together. You know, Monet, um, you know, Kane, Drew, all of them. Like, it's like he doesn't owe them any kind of loyalty. So I, I want to see what is what is going to be the ultimate outcome here because obviously now the goal is probably to get from under Carter. Like, that's probably the, probably the main goal now is to shake Carter off or get rid of him. Uh, well, in the trailer, you know, they actually talk about getting rid of him. So that's like the main goal now for them to team up. But in the end, is he going to continue to side with this family, you know, um, and basically be the adopted kid in the family? Um, you know, is is he going to continue to side with the Tahadas or is he going to cut them off for good and realize that he should take his mother's advice? <laughs> Go ahead, Rich. So, so are you suggesting, Gary, that we need to get a scene of, you know, you have no, you have uh, Monet, Noma, Carter, and Tariq, and Monet and Tariq shoot Carter and Noma, and then Tariq turns on Monet and caps her. That's what you're saying. We need to see, right? <laughs> or Tommy comes and shoots everybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. But but yeah, I mean, um, it, I guess it comes down to that. It's like, well, I guess uh, by by now, Noam was probably already dead by that point. You know, the the scene you're describing. <laughs> but yeah, I think it comes down to that. I think Tariq ha does have to make a decision of is he going to stand by this family because he he keeps you know it, it's it's not doing him any favors. You know, being connected to the Tahadas, like. It's the same repetitive cycle. So um, go ahead, Dana. All right. So and this kind of triggered something. Remember in the very beginning, the whole goal was to get um, Tariq for the murder of the agent. And remember how he was harassing him in the school the whole time. And now we're at the point where basically I own you. So you have to do this criminal activity for me. Where's the connection? I'm just. I just, we're so far from the goalpost. We're on a different football field. Are we even a football field? I feel like we're at the tennis court. I'm just confused. I, I, I just, I just, because it's not like 
you can say that the master manipulative plan is for everyone to is for Tariq to take the fall. I can't get him this way, but guess what? I can get him that way. But in a in a weird way that doesn't even make any sense because it's not like Tariq has been acting so recklessly this season that the bodies are just catching up to him. You know what I mean? And therefore, oh, we're gonna plant this on you. And that's how I got you this way. It's just the whole goal for him was to basically, it seemed like they're planted on the Tejadas. And then you could argue, well, the key with Clay's goal is to plant it on Monet because Monet, you know, lied to him about the connect. And if we go back to his rules, his rules were you don't kill an innocent and you don't lie to me. So you could say, that's the reason as to why he's upset with Monet and Monet has to take the fall for everything. But it also seems to be at this point when we remember when Monet busted through the house, which I don't know how she got there because the address of Felicia's house wasn't made public to her. It was made public to Diana and then Effie and, uh, and the other ones. But OK, she came busting through the house. And this is when I thought, oh, she's OK with taking the fall. Remember, she said, you got to get out of here. You got to go. So I was like, OK, she's going to take the fall for this and the kids will be free. And then there was a point where I thought that Carter was gonna just straight up kill um, Felicia. Because remember, they was in the car together? Did you erase the evidence? Yeah, I got everything. Okay, and then she's dead. But that didn't happen either. Because I guess his goal is not to kill his task force team. Because I guess because they're working with him and that's too messy because he got the IAB, which we never see by the way, but that was the rant that I already ranted. But my whole thing was, it seemed to me that Carter was upset that Monet chose the plug instead of just revealing the truth and then realized he chose the, she chose the plug instead of her own kids. Which then again would have been not maybe a next episode, which it doesn't look that way, it would have been to reignite the fact that, hey, Remember that whole time when we were plotting to kill mom because mom really doesn't care about us? She's the same, but we're not getting that. We're getting a super friends team up, which is to take out Detective Carter. So unless something happens in the end where it's like, yeah, ma, we're going to get Detective Carter. And in the end, they get Detective Carter, and then they turn on Monet, and it's like, yeah, we can't stand you. You, you chose the plug instead of us. Boom, boom, you're dead. And then they're free? Cool. But I don't know if that doesn't feel like that that's where they're going. And I'm just confused at this point. And there's also another thing what Richard said, going back with Michael Ely and Lorenz Tate scene, that was so beautiful. But here's the thing, Michael Ely, Detective Carter is known. They don't have to meet for them to be known. And I feel that they're both known to each other, but just not with each other because they're always in the press. Carter, when you remember when they showed the paper right up before who Carter was, he's this big time, you know, man that respects the law. He's this big time drug task force that takes down the criminals and has a sad backstory about his wife. So I can see him trusting Detective Carter because he's so well known. And I can understand Lorenz Tate, you know, you don't got, you got his first name, it's not Lorenz, but, Basically, Tate, you know, believing everything that he said. And in a way, it does make sense. You're in this whole uh, task force, this thing you got involved with. You're going to take down a criminal, and the criminal shoots you. That happens. People who are married to police officers, you do not know whether or not you're going to see that person by the end of the day. Because that job, even if you were trafficking, that's a very dangerous job. So for me, that was very believable. And at the moment, he didn't have any time to, to give pause to that. Here's his dead brother. You're upset. You're looking at the man who brought his kill, who's telling you who the killer is and what happened. So to me, that was the most sensical part of the episode for me. And, and I, I kind of like that. And I wish they had more, ep more scenes together. Because they, they do some great acting. The thing with Michael Ealy is, he plays the same character over and over, but he sure plays it good.
You know when you see him, and this probably should have been our warning from the very beginning. We should have went and said, oh, here comes Michael Ealy in a church. Well, he's not the good guy. Because when has he played the good guy? I can't recall. Was it in the 2000s the last time? Probably the 2000s. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, there you go. That's all I have. Oh yeah, he's really a natural bad guy. Like <laughs> he plays bad bad guys really well. Um, but yeah, so uh, those are my takeaways. So uh, let let's get to some questions now uh, and discuss some some other things uh, from the episode. So uh, obviously, a big part of this episode, you know, was about Diana and you know her losing the baby and being, you know, very disturbed and upset. And um, and then, you know, she went on her revenge arc. Um, and, you know, she, she, she took the gun from the safe, which is something uh, Tariq did before in OG Power. Um, so yeah, nice callback. And um, yeah, she went out to, to, to kill Felicia, you know? Um, so I wanna ask you guys, how do you feel about you know Diana's revenge arc, and then additionally because there is a lot of uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of interesting debate going on about you know um, the child and everything uh, that you know they encountered at the house and and like whether they should have actually spent so much time there or if they should have just left the crime scene because you know it's kind of like <laughs> you can't. You, staying that long with a body in the house and you know you're you're, you're gonna get caught at some point but yeah like there's a lot of debate about should they have stayed uh with the child if they were you know really serious about you know being murderers and everything like that but uh me personally i think they wanted to give diana like a motherly moment i guess like reading the bedtime story to the kid you know because she lost the child but i i don't i don't know if that was <laughs> if that was smart you know i don't know if it was smart um, to do, but uh, yeah, I guess they just wait to give her a moment. But I, I want to ask you guys, what did you think about Diana's revenge arc in this episode? Um, and I'm going to go to you first, Dana. What do you think? Okay, so here again, gonna be like, oh my god, Dana's negative. No, Dana's not. Dana's cool. Again, the baby should have lived because I would have thought that was more interesting. But we're gonna go with what we got, and what we got was a dead fetus stomped out by Felicia. Um, I liked that in terms of, I like how they handled it, even with the fact that they stayed in the house so long. One, it reminded me immediately, remember of Kill Bill, when, um, 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 the black woman whose name I can't remember at the moment, remember when, when Uma Thurman killed her and then at the end, the daughter walked in and she's like, mom. And then you realize, oh snap, when she gets older, she's going to probably go and get revenge. On, on on Bill the bride. Yep, yep. By the way, I'm still waiting for that for that next movie. So, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, I didn't have a problem with that because it shows that this is not just one random person. Now you took away their mother, and you could I, two for two. A mother took away a mother, right? She killed her baby, and you took away the mother. So that's yay poetry one on one or one hundred. Um, so I didn't have a problem with that. I didn't have a problem with her beating her in the head with a pan because you saw that that, that was such an act of revenge and emotion that, oh, that made sense, right? Um, I think it, it would have been interesting, but the fact that she, her head no longer exists and bashed in, I thought they was going to be like, oh, the cause of death was that she went back on drugs and overlapsed and relapsed. And then overdose, because remember they made the plot, are you using again? So I thought they were gonna use that to be like, oh, that's how she died. And the tanker Carter would cover it up that way. But it's pretty hard to be like, oh, she died of an overdose when her face is gone. So I don't think that's how they're gonna do it. Um, but the fact that she stayed in the house, you could argue she stayed in here too long. This was kind of her first kill, and it was not something that was done with a clear head. She did this out of revenge and out of anger. So her DNA was all over the place. That makes sense because again, she's not a professional. This was anger. This was, I'm gonna beat you down. 
Um, and then the fact that she read the kid a bedtime story. She freaked out. I don't think in a way that was to make her motherly. I think she just freaked out and was like, oh, snap, there's this kid. We'll read you a story. I don't know what to do. I'm panicking instead of just running out of the house. And if she did just run out of the house, then it wouldn't have set up the fact that the entire Brady Bunch would have returned to the house. Monet, Carter, uh, uh, Tariq, Drew, Kane. And no one would have, you know, she would have just left. And then, I think it did that way so they could set that up. Which again, how did Monet get the address? Or whatever. Um, so I like the fact that she, that they, that Felicia died that way. Now, when it comes to the guy whose name I forgot, that's going to be interesting to see how he plays the role in because he was already asking questions. So I do see that he is going to be a problem now for Carter. So that sets that up. I just, in general, overall, don't like how they did these character arcs, period. But I do look forward to that conclusion, which we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, me too, me too. Um, how about you, Rich? What's your thoughts on uh, Diana's revenge arc? Well, first and foremost, uh, that revenge arc, in my mind, it went close to how I imagined that it would go. You know, obviously when the baby died, I knew they were gonna be out for blood. We they did have they did have a scene in the trailer of Diana looking like she had took someone out for the season trailer. So we knew that this scene was coming. Um, but in terms of what they're telling the story about her connection with Tariq and the fact that Tariq brought up uh, Ray Ray, I actually thought that was a good connection in terms of how he explained it. But even then, Diana didn't want to hear that. You know, and, and, and again, you said something, Gary, that triggered in me earlier when you made the comment that Tariq, yes, meeting with Tasha, but never follows advice. He never followed the advice. You, you can make the comment, yes, he wanted to be there for Diana. But what did Tasha tell her? Tell him, don't drag yourself into what's happening with this family. If Tariq was not there when everybody showed up, he wouldn't be involved in this on that level. But now that he is there, well, Carter, that's another person that Carter is going to try to use to his advantage. So as far as them staying there, I understand the criticism, but I will say it, it makes sense. You know, Diana still shell-shocked after getting her first kill. I think it is ridiculous, though, that you let the kids see you. And then, I mean, I would I would, I would, have tried to get out of there before. Would have. If I saw there was a kid there, I would get out of there. I wouldn't stay there because, obviously, the kid doesn't know who they are. And then I think it's interesting how, you know, if they... When, when Monet came, she made the comment like, oh, I'll take care of him. Like as if, and, and I actually thought Monet was going to suggest, oh, I'll take care of the kid. He saw y'all. Well, I need to take him out. Luckily, they didn't go in that direction because uh, that would not have gotten a good response from the people watching the show. But um, overall, I mean, I think, again, them staying there that long, from a writing standpoint, this is to create the scene of everybody showing up the drama, the reveal that, yes, Drew it did tell Carter everything, and that was why he was there. And one correction, Kane was not there because Kane is the one that is still trying to maneuver how he's going to deal with Noma and Monet because that's a confrontation that is going to happen at some point in the next three episodes. But uh, overall, I, I was okay with what they did. Again, this is all for entertainment value. It's a lot of stuff you can say – it's a little ridiculous, nonsensical, uh, unlogical, but I did. they did this for entertainment because they want you to be on the edge of your seat when you see everybody show up. Oh, what's going to happen next? That's exactly why they kept them there that long. But that's just my opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely. They definitely wanted to uh, cash in on the drama a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I, I just hope they make it make sense with these, these next three episodes. Like, uh, I, I it, it was a bit of a, a weird episode, but if they managed to somehow pay this off in a good way, then props to them, I guess. But, you know, it's, it's hard to see that happening just with with how things have been going so far. Um, 
but yeah, so moving on, uh, next question I have is, um, do you think, oh, let me get Dana back in here. Yeah, do you think that Kane is is scheming on Noma, basically? Like, is he running game on her, you know, by trying to offer to become her, her passport husband, if you will? Like, you know, so she can get her citizenship and, you know, um, situate all of her business and everything in the U.S. Uh, is he running game? Is he planning to, you know, have basically a hostile takeover of her estate by doing this? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I want to ask you. Is this is this a play? Is this a ploy on his behalf? Is he being calculated? Or do you really think at this moment he wants to unify himself with her you know um and be a be a partner like what do you think about that so i'm going to go to you first richard what do you think so uh if i was kane yes this needs to be a play at this point you know what this what this show has told us kane obviously he cares about effie and you saw when she, when kane had that conversation with noma he's like oh yeah effie was there when the russians got taken out it's like, you know, Noma doesn't really care about that. She's just, we need to get find out who is behind this. And she, of course, she uses Effie and them to find out the information. But she has no intentions of ever letting Effie go. And you saw how Kanan was adamant. She wants out the game. Uh, Noma is not interested in that. So I kind of feel like if I'm Kane from this standpoint, everything should be a strategy play at this point for the same reason that he has been trying to keep Noma and Monet separate from each other without revealing information about who was, you know, them basically going after each other. So now that you have this whole thing about Carter being involved, it's going to be very hard for him to, you know, hide that fact that Monet also is a part of this. So I do want to see which direction they're going in. But if I'm Kane, I am 1000% planning to take over because again, when he had that conversation with Noma in this episode, it said, so I want to make sure that uh, I get credit for all the work that I've done to build up this stuff to help you out and that you're not just going to throw me to the side. And he made that comment. I thought to myself, yeah, I think that Kane is eventually going to take over that, uh, take out Noma. And no, it's not because of the fact that she's messing around with Davis. This should be a strategic play from a power standpoint. They they told us this entire season, Kane felt as though he never had his moment to really take over. He was always, you know, around when Lorenzo was doing stuff. Lorenzo didn't want to give him an opportunity to take over. So this is his opportunity to get his own and take control because unlike Diana and Diana and, and Drew, Kane didn't have a future. He didn't have aspirations of being an artist, going to school. So this is all he knows and what he does best. So, yes, that's the play that he should have. So, but again, let's see how it pans out. Uh, and I guess we're going to find out in the next three episodes. But yeah, he he has no goal and intention of ever having anything serious with Noma. This is all a play to benefit him. That's just my opinion. But we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And and what do you think, Dana? Is, is it a ploy? I 1000% agree with Richard. And actually, I want to think of something for a second here. So the show itself, as we know, is called Power, book two, right? And the whole goal is about obviously obtaining power. And you have Tariq, which initially was his goal, was to basically obtain enough power so him and his family can live free and do whatever it is that they want and get out of the business. Kane is very driven in the fact that he knows what he wants to do. He always knew what he wanted to do. He was never given that opportunity. And now we're at the point where basically we have to just take things. We cannot wait and keep waiting because we will never get anywhere. And I think he's the one that is using and manipulating Noma to get what he wants. And I asked this question to the actress who plays Noma. Like, hey, look. What's going on with the situation ship with Kane? How can, how do you feel whether or not you're the one that's being manipulated? And she was like, you know, of course, I always have me, I, I always know everything. So like, that's really great and cool. But the storyline could actually be that this is Kane's 
way of being that part of that book too, right? He is the one who could necessarily be the next ghost because the way that Tariq is going, he's nowhere near ghost. Yeah, you can put on the fancy little suits and everything, and you can have like a little moment and a little call back to your dad. But to me, he never embodied the ghost character. Kane body embodies business and street life. He can switch off in between very quickly. And yes, we. but the thing with Tariq is we're being told that he can. With Kane, we see it. Okay, so I feel that if we're going to go on that spinoff route, what if this whole thing was actually set of game? And this is why Tariq feels like a, a afterthought in his own show. Because this whole thing has been driven by other characters. We're introduced to the family because of Kane, who just ends up having to be involved with Tariq. Cain hates Tariq. Cain is the one with the father who never chose him. Cain is the one with the weak brother. Cain is the one with the mother who's only self-centered and only thinks about itself. I mean, this this could have been the greatest trick. This is the Kaiser Sose of the actual series. We thought it was Tariq the whole time. Now it's Cain. And if that is the case, and they fully go through that, you have my respect. Forgive me for ranting and raving. This whole thing was about Cain from day one, and then you was pulling the big wool over it on this. I commend you, because this seems to be the only way that it seems to go. Because Cain doing this business with Monet, one, sets her up. So who's to say that Cain will be the one to take her out? Cain frees Effie with this whole situation shit. He didn't say, I want to be your butt boy. I want to be one of your, your little, you know, people that you rule over and dictate to. He stated to him, to her, that I'm your partner in this. We are 50-50. I have a voice. Effie can go. You free Effie, because to me, you don't, you don't care about Tariq and them. As we all saw, that man hates Tariq with every fiber in his bones from day one. He cares about Effie. And remember that little kiss on the head? That kiss wasn't like, yeah, I want that booty butt. That was a kiss of, I genuinely care about you. Their whole conversation was, I genuinely care about you. And Effie's response was, I forgot what that felt like. Oh my gosh, you see me as a human being. So to me, that would have been amazing. Now, we can go back how the, how the interview went. With her saying, I don't like the way that the character was 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 just portrayed at the very end. Maybe she's the one that, that takes out Kane. I don't know. But again, that could be a way to throw us off. Remember the whole Garrett, remember the Garf Andrew Garfield? I don't know what you're talking about. Spider-Man. I'm not in Spider-Man. What's Spider-Man? So maybe that's the way to, to get us off of that scent. Yes, Richard. I was just going to agree with you and say, yeah, that, that maybe she is uh, practicing from the 50 cent book of trolling. With that particular response, and maybe she, maybe yeah. she does have a happy ending. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that's a happy ending. You know, you're free. Ring, ring, call for mom. Hi, mom. And we have a reunion, and she goes off into the sunset, and she goes and plays with her robots, and goes to Cal State and MIT, and ends up becoming one of these big robotnists. She is the the Elon Musk who we actually care about. You know, she's the good version of Elon Musk and her cars actually work. So there you go. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree with what you were saying about Kane. Like Kane seems to be everything that Tariq wants to be, like everything that you know he wishes he was in the streets. Kane is that. And you know, it does seem like the way Kane is written as well, like he's he's had plot armor in this season like you know just look at the fight with uh zion zion is a trained caged fighter and i mean uh, yeah zion is a, a a trained cage fighter and kane breezed right through that fight like 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 it was nothing like we never well we've seen him train before i think but we haven't seen him like you know he, he's not like zion where he's experienced that cage fighting but he breezed through that fight so it's like 
they are really setting this character up to to be that guy it feels like um so i whatever spin-off they do i do feel like kane is probably going to be a part of it and shout outs to woody mccain as well because he's he's done a great job with the character like i like how he plays these different um roles like with the cop you know uh in this episode officer ramirez uh that was very savage to take the name of uh <laughs> the officer he killed but um yeah and we, we've seen him play the businessman we've seen him play a lawyer you know he's done all these different things um so props to him because I, I think woody mccain like i wasn't he um i think i was watching the breakfast club interview he did and he was like some actor they found on instagram or something like that so he, he wasn't like a actor who went to school or anything like that he, he didn't train to be an actor he he just naturally kind of you know came into it you know through his personality and he's doing a great job um and he definitely does seem like he could be a leading man for a tv show um so it, it does feel like this season is kind of grooming his, his character quite a lot so I wouldn't be surprised if he if he does have a spinoff. Go ahead, Dana. He, he was Bobby Brown. You put some respect on Bobby oh, yeah. Brown. He was Bobby he was Brown. Brown. Yeah. He can say, he can dance, he can act. He's a triple threat. Ooh, yeah. so talented. And also, really quickly, Caucasian male, please come. That was funny because he hates Brady. And he's always making the kind of race joke at him. So, yes. I yeah yeah definitely i forgot about that bobby brown but um but yeah um props to woody mccain though uh, he's doing a great job as kane and i do i do think that you know all of this is a ploy that he's scheming on no more and uh, this might be part of the resolution of of the series where you know um obviously carter is the main problem because he's trying to kind of take down noma and he's trying to use the tahadas so i mean if kane were to just simply kill like marry noma and then kill her and then he owns the organization and then all they got to do is then get rid of carter and then the families are just unified and just everyone's happy everyone you know goes back to college and graduates you know <laughs> so that that would be the easy pathway to a happy ending, I guess. Um, but uh, that's not the ending we want. Let's be real. We want we want it to be messy. We want some death. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kane. Uh, whatever uh, the outcome is there with Nomar, I do feel like Effie is going to be a part of this somehow. Like maybe the twist comes into play of you know who's really her mother, who who she's related to or whatever, you know, like th this marriage, you know, when he tells Effie that he's going to marry Noma, um, I think it's going to, you know, she she's going to be annoyed by it at first, but I think he'll make it up to her after maybe. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But um, yeah, the last question I had, and then Dana, if you have any questions, you can... Uh, you can also ask. Uh, last question I have is, what do you think Carter's going to do with the footage he has on Tariq killing Zion? <laughs> and um, so me personally, what I could see happening is, you know, based, in, based on the trailer for the next episode, we see that taking out Carter is probably going to be a big focus of the next episode. Um, Tariq is going to, like, dedicate a lot of his efforts to that to trying to, to break free of Carter. Um, so if Carter were to catch wind of the fact that Tariq is trying to, you know, take him out or get rid of him or something, you know, he has this in his back pocket and, you know, he can, he basically has a send Tariq to jail free card, you know, in his back pocket right now. So, you know, he could take Tariq out the mix at any point if he wants to. Um, so maybe that's how it gets used, you know, the car catches wind of them plotting on him and then he chooses to send Tariq to prison uh, with this footage. Uh, but do you guys have, you know, any, any other thoughts on what he might do? Um, does he have something planned already? Like, what do you think about that? Uh, I'll go to you first, Richard. 
Well, that's an interesting question. I think it's a good question. Um, I don't really know what Carter is going to do because it feels as though this episode has told us that he is obsessed with taking down Noma. He needs leverage to take down Noma. So he's going to try to get as much intel and information and make the Tejadas and Tariq do as all the stuff they need to do to get her out of the picture. Um, while I do think that the next episode, based on that trailer, is focused on taking down Carter, I do not believe Carter will get taken down in that episode. They're probably going to save that for the finale, I would assume, or the uh, episode before the finale. But to answer the question, um, here's the thing. Obviously, like you said, he does have that evidence, that video could be used as evidence, and maybe he can approach Tariq and say, if you try to take me out, I have this footage that will, that will, that, uh, this, this is ready to go out, you will go down. Something to that extent. I, I have no idea. Um, I have to see what they're going to do, because again, they've told us that he is obsessed on taking out Noma. But he, he's going to have a lot to deal with in that next episode because Nico is suspicious of him. Um, and I'm assuming, and my assumption is again, this was not in the trailer. My assumption is that when Nico finds out that Felicia got killed, then he's going to definitely have questions about what is going on, what happened to her, because he doesn't know all that stuff that was going on between the, her and Diana. So I want to see how, what is the excuse that Carter is going to tell him? about what happened to her. Because again, they have families. We saw Felicia had a kid. You saw Nico has a family. They're going to reveal that, I would assume, at some point since he was in that photo. But my thought is that he's going to be, he's going to really have questions for Carter. What happened to her? I need to know who did this. So I want to see how Carter handles that. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Because I feel like he's going to be preoccupied. He ain't going to really have a plan to deal with the footage, but he he does see the footage again. They showed that in the trailer, but I just don't know how he's going to use it yet. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Nico will come into play here as well. You know, uh, maybe he'll be a part of what happens. But um, go ahead, Dana. Have you got any thoughts on what might happen with that footage? I genuinely don't know. I, you know, one of two things could be used, but it should have already been used. Was the fact that, to when, <clears throat> um, what's his name? Oh my gosh, Detective Carter saw the footage initially. He could have easily just used that to turn in Tariq, but he didn't. So I feel because Felicia is now involved, and we had the other detective who is was as you pointed out was in the family photo i think that this is going to just be another overcomplicated situation um where they're gonna maybe somehow he gets the the, the phone to read gets the phone back and there they just destroy the evidence um you know <clears throat> i don't know what they're going to do unless somehow someone gets the evidence you know, and decide to, to hide it from Tariq, but then use it as leverage on him later. But we only have three, two, two, three episodes left. And so three episodes left. So I just, I don't know what they're going to do. Because at this point, Carter would have just destroyed the, the evidence, but he needs that in order to have leverage against Tariq. Unless they use Effie's hacking skills to hack into that phone and take the video, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm just very confused. And can we trust Felicia? The fact that she said this is the only copy. That I don't believe because if she got the IAB was on her. You know, Carter, as we already know, was dirty and essentially holding everyone hostage. Because he's, you know, she made it, it made it seem like he's giving everyone a second chance, but he's also using them to do his dirty deed that people are not there willingly like they want to. Is this not like a group decision? Hey, guys, we're we're going to do some bad things in order to get the good guys. This really seems like Detective Carter is just using and manipulating everyone for his own task. So. I don't want, I don't really believe that she only just has that one copy. I don't feel that way. Um, but I honestly don't know what they're going to do with that footage 
unless they they use it in some weird way to say, hey, it was actually Detective Carter who forced Tariq to kill Zion. And then they use that as evidence. And it was to say that Detective Carter is even going to die. Wouldn't it be more, to me, it would be more impactful if he lives and ends up in the jail with all the prisoners that he sent to prison by planting evidence and everything else on them. And then he meets his in that way. Remember the whole Drew situation and the other power when he was set on fire? Maybe it's that. And he dies that way, in prison. I don't know. Oh yeah, Dre. Yeah, <laughs> that that was a. Uh... Dre, sorry, and it was a. I had the D and an R correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you was spot on. But um, yeah, that was a that was a pretty savage death that Dre experienced in prison, being uh, lit on fire. But um, yeah, as for Carter and uh, Nico, like, see, I'm wondering, could Effie have found more on that computer? Because when Kane left her, she was still kind of, you know, hacking and doing her thing, doing the bleep bloop stuff. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I feel like she could have uh, maybe found something more that they can use as leverage as well. So, and maybe that could trump whatever Carter has, who knows? Or, or maybe, uh, maybe, maybe they find out about the video that Carter has and he tries to use it, like, but as he's kind of like, you know, processing it through the system or whatever at, you know, the police office trying to get, trying to get a warrant or whatever to, to arrest Tariq, uh, maybe they can use Nico, like maybe, uh, you know, if 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 the laptop traces to Nico, maybe they could approach him, and he's already kind of questioning, you know, what uh, Carr is doing. And clearly, if he finds out what happened to Felicia, like if he finds out she's dead, he's going to have even more questions, like Richard said. Um, so maybe they'll go to maybe uh, you know everyone will go to to uh, Nico to try and um, stop. To, to stop Carter from busting Tariq or something like that, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's so many things they can do at this point, you know, and we only have three episodes, so, you know, it's, it's probably going to be happen very quickly <laughs> at this point, but yeah, uh, that footage, 100% we're going to see that footage again, and it's going to be used somehow, some way, so that's the only thing that's kind of certain at this point. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah that, that's, that's it for my questions. Dana, did you have anything this week? But, okay, so for like, the thing is, first of all, I do need to apologize for the Brayden storyline because it did slip my mind. Brayden was ready to cut that woman in her house. Remember, he pulled out that butcher knife. So he is a true ride or die. I just don't like the, him being a half crackhead, a little too on the nose with Tommy. But yeah, so you guys get a plus for that. Um, as so much for, for questions, um, I did find that it was interesting, um, the whole situation, as I already stated before, between, uh, what's his name, Kane and Effie. I really like that partnership. It seems to be the most one of the most genuine friendships, aside from Braden and, and Tariq. They, they're just going through some things right now. But um, I do like that fact. Um, the, now that we have the addition of Tariq in the Carter crew, I wonder what new task is he going to try to bring? Because um, they killed off the Russians. What's left with that whole storyline? I don't know unless they come up with something um, completely different. Um, Tariq stating this, Tariq stated, I'm not ghost. I can fix whatever problem I'm in. We have not seen that yet. And so I would really like for that to come into play. That'd have been really nice. Any moment here, a moment now. Um, then, uh, another thing that I wanted to understand, I, maybe I'm missing something, 
What was Braden so obsessed about when he was on when he was on the No Lie website? Because remember, it was the bag, the shirt, and something. Was it their products? Because they put it was on pre order, and he was just waiting. He kept refreshing yeah. that page. I think those were the uh, the products they were using to sell the stuff, like to sell their uh, drugs. Oh, like, so he was kind of like added, warning the lies. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that would have made sense. He was waiting. Yep. The the merch, so he can and you yeah. 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 Um. Let's just see. Um. I think that at the moment is truly it. Um. I think the whole bringing Tasha back, with her saying, "I just want us to be together again," kind of felt like a bad omen. Like, oh, she's gonna die. You know, because she was just like, you know, you you gotta. You know, straighten up and focus on your goals. We're here waiting for you. We're waiting. And again, where is the, is she? I think they removed her from witness protection because remember that was a huge threat. Remember Carter threatened her and then we never really got a follow up. It would have been great to have seen a scene where they completely removed uh, witness protection and then she was freaking out because we know that she knows that they're going to remove the witness protection from her. Yeah. You Richard? just unlocked you just unlocked the thought in my head. I'm just I don't want to interrupt, but what? to go to your point, at the end where Carter tells Tariq, welcome to the team, he should have said, You'll do what I say or I'll hurt Tasha. That would have been a great way to really further wow. emphasize to Tariq, yeah, you need you work for me now or your family's in trouble. That would have been fantastic, but continue. <laughs> yeah, no, that would have been fantastic because from the way how they just walked into the house, there's no more witness protection. Remember, she was in a house before. Now this seems like it's a regular apartment. We don't know where she's at, but she she's there. So um yay for that. But I don't really have um any kind of questions aside from just do better. Just do it. we have three episodes. Try to do better, and and I'm happy for Stokely. He doesn't want to be a part of any kind of drug thing. You stand your ground. So what happened to the girl? So I guess Stokely and then the rest of the people just bounced, because because they they've been gone. But yeah, that's they, it. They were so disgusted by Braden that they just you know left. They 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 were disgusted, and the power did not have any more budget. To bring these these people back for every episode, oh, so that's the real reason. Wouldn't it be? <laughs> it would have been a more powerful scene instead of Stokely. That was actually the girl. Yes, who was that like, would have definitely. We're done. Yep, like you would have been. Me name, but yeah, that would have made a lot more sense considering her relationship with Brayden, and the fact that she didn't like Tariq. That would have been an excellent uh, person to put there instead. But hey, it is it is. I guess because they wanted to show Tariq like he was about to. You know damn well Tariq wasn't going to beat up that kid, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But it yeah, is yeah. what it is. <laughs> that was really random, like it being Stokely that shows up. Like it, it should have been L or something. Like, yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Richard, did you have anything um, you wanted to bring up? Because uh, we, we could also talk about the, the trailer. Uh, it was a very brief trailer, but you know, uh, if, if there's anything you wanted to bring up from that as well. The only thing I wanted to say about the trailer is they did have a scene of Noma and Kane meeting up with uh, Nico. So clearly, I want to see, because again, the way they cut the trailer, it's like you can't really tell everything that's going to happen because sometimes it could be misleading. That was one of the main things you and I talked about with Snowfall when they had their trailer. Some of that stuff is misleading. So, um, I mean, I'm curious to see what happens next week, uh, obviously. And uh, we saw a lot of people holding people at gunpoint. Look like Braden and Tariq was going after somebody else with guns. So I don't really know what the hell is going on in the trailer, if I'm honest. So I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff happening in the show right now. They only have three episodes left, so they have to turn up the heat. But um, I look forward to seeing what happens next week, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. It was, it was a very brief trailer. It's hard to really like discern what's going to happen from it. I do think uh, at this point, we're probably going to get a lot of like twists and turns. So I don't think it's even possible for us to really predict everything that's going to happen based on this trailer. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, you see uh, the footage, of course, comes back. Uh, we see that in the trailer. You know, uh, like you said, Noma and, uh, and Nico. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, Brayden and, and Tariq, it seems like they've got some action popping off as well in this. So who knows, man? It's, it's hard to predict at this point, you know, uh, with, with how the show has been going. Um, but yeah, Dana, any thoughts on what you saw in the trailer or any predictions? Well, yeah, it seems like, you know, what we've kind of seen from the from before, the, the family is saying that they have to get leverage on, a leverage against Carter. They have to bring him down before they bring, before he brings them down. And it was really interesting what we saw with Davis and Tariq having that conversation where it's like, I work for Monet. And he's like, I work, you work for me. What, what is going on? Um, so it's interesting to see where Davis will go with this. And it makes me wonder, could he be the one that turns against Tariq and Dim? Because, you know, Monet seems to have more of a need. And you could argue more of money that can pay him. He's sleazy either way. <laughs> to me, it seems like the, wherever the money blows is where you'll find him. Uh, forget the license. I guess it's just about getting that money. So for him, it's going to be interesting. And then we'll probably see how that their fallout happens. And in a way, I'm kind of wondering, does he blame Tariq for the death of his brother? Again, another storyline we never really got. They were never got to really sit and stew and marinate when it comes to the death of the brother. He just lost his license. But whatever. Um, it would have been nice somewhere in the background where we had that kind of conversation. The people that he had interacted with has basically cost him his brother. And and so now he's with Monet. But at the same time, we have Monet is now possibly with Kane. She didn't say yes to the proposal at all. She just kissed him. So we don't know where she's going to be at. She has a decision to make. But him, you know, going full in and turning his back on Tariq. That, that's very interesting. And then that, to me, makes me wonder where else can Tariq turn to? And maybe it's Stein. Remember Stein? Is Stein still alive? The white dude? Maybe? Oh, Stern. You mean Simon Stern? Stern. Ciao. I said Stein. Stern? Remember also um, Tariq had an estate? No, I guess that wouldn't make any sense because he doesn't have an estate anymore. I was going to say that guy from the Cosby show. Um, but he, there's no reason for him to come because he lost all that money. So, yeah. It, and then remember how everybody was talking about RSJ in the last episode. But I don't think he's going to make a return. But I do see that it's going to be really interesting. And then you have Nico is at play here, and he knows what's really going on. And there's a lot of decisions that has to be made. But, and what also was interesting, it seemed to be the table, there was the, the hottest you had um what's his face um the whole reason why we're watching this show ghost's son oh my gosh mm -hmm. Tariq. why did that escape me so you had Tariq, <laughs> but you also had right you also had kane and noma it seemed like they was all sitting at at least it was edited that way to assume they were all sitting at the table together and they was coming up with a way to get rid of carter so therefore they've already tapped into noma and said hey Carter is after, they gave her the warning, the heads up, that, you know, Carter is after you. So it's going to be interesting to see Noma knowing everything and not in the dark. Maybe she ends up choosing Kane because Kane was sitting right next to her. So maybe it's a situation ship where, hey, this is why you should choose me to marry you. And then I can steal all your businesses and your clients and everything else. But you should choose me because I'm letting you know there's an entire plot to kill you. So that is interesting to see with everyone kind of being the super friends. We always had, I always call it the super friends from last season. Well, no matter how much we fight, we have to come together to take out our common enemy. So um, Detective Carter is that common en enemy. And the only loose cannon, and I just cannot predict at this moment, is Miko. 
but with Felicia dead, he might be team team Tariq. But he can be easily manipulated into being team Carter again. So that that's the only thing that we have to look at look for at this moment. But I don't know what what to 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 make of it. I think the trailer wasn't really a trailer. It was more like a teaser. It was okay. I have no complaints about it. Yeah. Um, as far as Davis, uh, I, I think, you know, I think he, he uh, took a very destructive path of dealing with his brother's death because I think his way of dealing with it was to go through a hoe phase. You know, he... he <laughs> He went right through his hoe phase this season. <laughs> First, he was sleeping with the, uh, his assistant that he had, and then he uh, he started sleeping with Noma. He had the two girls in the shower, you know. So uh, that, that's that's been his therapy this season. But um, as for you know his loyalty between Tariq and Noma, um, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see how. The marriage angle is is handled because he is a lawyer right so i'm assuming noma might go to him to kind of deal with this uh marriage situation with kane like to set it up maybe uh legally and everything um so you know she might consult him about that and he's clearly probably not going to be feeling it too much like he's not going to be happy about that maybe so this might cause some friction between him noma and kane um, so would that cause cause his loyalty to swing more towards Tariq? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's real up in the air at the moment, but that is going to be an interesting scene to see um, next week. But, uh, but yeah, that's all I've got on the trailer. You know, it's very short, but um, we do want to hear from the people. So, you know, please do chime in in the comments. We're, we're sorry for being a bit late this week, but, you know, it's just the way... It works out, you know, because uh, on, on top of, you know, not getting the screener, we also have to, like, work with our schedules, which are kind of hectic. So, you know, but I'm glad we was able to get it done for the people. And I can't wait to see what you guys, you know, have to say about the show. Um, but, yeah, that is going to be it for this week. Uh, we thank you all for listening or watching. And we'll be back next week to recap episode eight of power book two ghost season four so until then take care everyone and we'll see you soon peace out